Us humans think that we rule the world, but when it comes to the animal kingdom, our cities and societies might just be lagging behind. We are social animals preferring to live in groups, but our social superiors have taken communal living to a new level. These so-called eusocial animals have developed a lifestyle that is so much more than just hanging around in a group, and they reap the benefits of the full cooperation of up to thousands of individuals. But what makes a eusocial animal, and is it really something us humans should be striving for? Sticking together helps animals like the snapping shrimp survive. The bigger the group, the lower the chance of any one individual being eaten and the easier it is to hang on to a safe nesting site. In this case, inside a tropical sponge. Group living also makes it easier to find and exploit food sources. Bees are expert foragers, with scouts using an intricate waggle dance to point their hive mates towards nectar up to six kilometers away. Once animals start living in groups, it paves the way for a division of labour, so that specific jobs can be done much more efficiently by individuals dedicated to that task. Within a beehive, there are bees who forage for food, bees who fan the hive to keep it cool, bees who build the hive, and bees who care for the young, among many other specialists. But the nurse bees, checking on individual larvae over a thousand times a day, are what define a bee colony as truly eusocial. These larvae are not the nurse bee's own, but they care for them nevertheless. Nurturing a child that isn't your own seems to go against the most fundamental of evolutionary urges, to further your line. Yet all you social animals, like these leaf cutter ants, make special efforts to set up creches to look after the eggs and young larvae under all circumstances. When the nest is threatened or attacked, the young are the first to be taken out of danger, even though the ants carrying them are not those that produced them. While this may seem impossibly altruistic, it's a bit more understandable when you realise that the nurses are caring for their siblings, not simply a stranger's child. And there's no careful selection of the right relation going on. In a eusocial colony, everyone is related. Naked mole rats are one of very few vertebrates that are eusocial. All the babies in the breeding chamber belong to a single queen, while all the other individuals simply don't reproduce. Only the queen is tasked with the heavy burden of bearing children, leaving the remaining non-reproducing mole rats to do the work of looking after the colony. This division of reproductive labour is common to all eusocial animals, and there are few places where it's more developed than in a termite nest. Beneath the vast constructions that extend like skyscrapers above the savannah, termites have got the social hierarchy all sorted out. Individuals are tasked with tending fungus gardens to make food, defending the mound from invading ants, and tending to the queen and her young. The queen lies in a special chamber with the same male she founded the colony with up to 20 years ago. She's adapted for nothing more than laying eggs, and has become so swollen that she can't even look after herself. But with workers to look after her, she does her gruelling job efficiently, producing up to 30,000 eggs a day. It's because of this strict division between who can and who can't to reproduce that human societies haven't quite crossed the line into eusociality. Yet, we may be missing out on the benefits of such a tight-knit colony. Groups focused on a single task are ruthlessly efficient, and by acting selflessly to look after the group, they make sure their genes are passed on through their sisters and the next potential queen. If only people could stay so selflessly focused, we could unlock the advantages of eusociality. Here at Earth Unplugged, we answer fascinating questions about the natural world. Click here to watch more from me and let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, if you're new around here, make sure you subscribe to Earth Unplugged.